Uh, good evening, everybody, and let's start. So we have uh, we were reading a paper in the last class. Uh, this paper was on acoustic scene analysis or audio scene analysis. Um, let's uh, revisit the overall goal which we are looking at. So this is detection and classification of acoustic scenes and events. There are two tasks here. One is uh, classification of acoustic scene. What is an acoustic scene? Uh, like the overall label for the whole acoustic environment, whether it is a classroom or it's a mess or it is uh, uh, GT road or it is inside a car or it is in the playground or it's in the green, green park stadium like that. So you give one label to the entire acoustic scene, which you have recorded with your uh, microphone. And second task is detection and classification of events. There are dis distinct events happening around us all the time. Somebody is coughing, somebody is sneezing, somebody fan noise, then maybe somebody talking, some music playing. So many events. How do you detect them? If I ask you, is there any music playing in the class? You can detect, okay, no, it's not. And then you can not only detect, but also classify um, um, that, yes, this is music, this is not speech, something like that. Okay. Uh, so we look through the abstract. The abstract says, there are general sounds in everyday environment and we want to automatically classify audio scenes and automatically detect and classify audio events. We went through the abstract, the uh, introduction, the background. I don't remember exactly. Yeah, this is what we had seen. Yes. So the bag of features approach, right? So we looked at co-occurrences. We gave an example of hurry. Like if I give you, uh, just the characters, not the complete words. You can still make out the words if your task is a limited vocabulary task with very less overlaps. For example, uh, somebody actually asked in the last, in the end of the, at the end of the class, somebody asked this question that if you have hurry, it can also, if, you, if I give you H A R I, it can also match, what was that example? Rahi or something, R A H I Rahi. So it can match that word also, right? Then what is the remedy in such a case? So the answer is, in such a case, there is no remedy. <laughs> you see, our sim simply your features don't contain that information, right? So your present features, the bag of uh, characters, cannot distinguish between Rahi and Hari. But it can do other kinds of distinction. It can distinguish Hari from Kamala, Kamala from Kashipa, and so many other words. So that is the utility of bag of words features. You are losing information exact temporal information, but you have co-occurrence information present with you. Uh, okay, so uh, let's see here. Okay, uh, bag of frames approach, yes, we had read this. Okay, now in acoustic scenes, what kind of bag of words or bag of features we can have? So we break the entire audio into small, small frames, right? Each frame is represented with a vector, acoustic features extracted from this frame. What can they be? Uh, the spectrum, but spectrum is a long representation, right? If you take 1024 uh, point FFT or DFT, it is a long, rep you can compress it you, because feature compression is always good. Why? Because of curse of dimensionality. Right? Curse of dimensionality. So you want to compress your features. So let us say I can get, I, I only need the spectral envelope. I do not need the uh, entire spectrum. Just the envelope is enough that, okay, in which bands, what is the average power? Like I gave you an example of R versus E, right? In R, the power is kind of equally distributed, but in, when you say E, there is a kind of band gap in the middle, right? It's kind of uh, diverging. Um, the power is distributed towards the extremes, but in the middle there is a significant gap. So you can use this uh, envelope information to distinguish between different 
phonemes or different word or different sounds okay so that is the idea of mfcc features it it extracts the envelope of your spectrum right so now what you have obtained the entire audio you broke down into frames each frame you represented with a small vector of mfcc features generally people use 13 dimensional vector right 13 dimensional mfcc features okay so and then th consider this as your bag of features let us say you have 1 second of audio right you extracted let us say um 100 frames out of it 100 frames each frame you represented with 13 dimensional vector so what is the total uh size of your bag 100 cross 13 right 100 cross 13 bag uh and this is your uh whole thing means each vector here is uh, one item inside your bag so you have you have 100 items each item is 13 dimensional vector right and now you are uh looking at the distribution uh i gave you this example that uh let us say this is my one item second item third item in this case it is two dimensional item but if you look at them see it it is 3 13 dimensional item and this distribution will be different for different classes let's say the class cuff this is the distribution more or less this will be the distribution for class sneezing this is the distribution and you are comparing your test distribution with your already learned distributions whichever is the closest you say this is the word right now this is the class okay now what kind of distributions they are using so they are first using mfcc features and they are using gaussian mixture models to model this distribution right uh the other strategy is to use an intermediate representation so this is a, i have highlighted this term intermediate representation what does that mean it means i am not interested in the complete spectrum or features extracted from the complete spectrum but i decompose these spectra into part based representation and use them to represent my audio uh i give you an example you remember nf nmf uh, right non negative matrix factorization what did you do there if you remember that image like you have mnist uh, data mnist images which are hand written digits so if i uh, i can represent the entire class of twos with a small number of dictionary elements right which will be strokes right some stroke like this some stroke like this some stroke like this some stroke like the uh, loop in the two right these kind of strokes will represent your dictionary will will create form your dictionary right i can detect some speech <laughs> okay anything uh, you want to understand or any doubts okay um um yeah so instead of representing uh each mfcc vector uh, as one item in your bag i can decompose my input with the help of these dictionary elements let's say each spectrum can be represented as a sum of those dictionary elements and those coefficients could be my new feature vectors what is the advantage of doing that is it clear what am i doing not clear okay i'll repeat earlier what you were doing okay earlier what i was doing is i was having this different spectra extracted from my these are spectra right mod x f this is f and this is m or t whatever you want to call it so i have different spectra extracted from my audio some audio uh, clip and this is my bag so i extract some features from here let us say mfcc which is smaller right from here i came to this mfcc features right uh so i am representing this is these are the items inside my bag 
in the second stream in the in the sorry in the second scheme what am i doing is i have these xf the same thing but now i break it down in terms of using nmf so i can write each x is equal to wh and i use only these h vectors here these are the h vectors here so now my items now my items are not the mcc features but these h vectors what is the advantage of doing it this way yeah even mfcc are reducing your dimensionality this is a good question so please pay attention go back to the basics what was the advantage of using nmf tell me practically what is the utility of non negativity yeah that is fine yeah there, there is an iterative way to estimate h but that is not an advantage that is disadvantage <laughs> and you said uh, what did you say multi mfcc is also independent mfcc is also the they are designed in such a way to enhance the decorrelatedness of the features that all the features within the vector all the tuples are kind of decorrelated To, so that maximum compression can be achieved so mfcc features has that property so what is latent feature latent point of the two points are given in what sense ha huh, in mfcc also you can find maybe the euclidean distance if not the inner product interpretability doesn't play any role here does it is it are we looking at interpretability here we are just classifying so somebody may say i i don't need interpretability here we are getting the clusters uh, which are in yeah so they might be very interpretable in that sense yeah so okay so go back to your basics what was the advantage of nmf which pca did not give you which uh, vector quantization did not give you which uh, other forms of uh, representation did not give you Uh, maybe I'll give him something to do with superposition or linear addition. Source separation. So, for example, I am coughing, and uh, Sagnik is talking, right? I am coughing, and he is talking. And uh, if in my during my training, I have only seen examples. Like consider this case. If I have only considered examples of individual coughing. <laughs> and individual speaking right so it can never uh, detect coughing from that mixture because it has never seen coughing with speaking right is it clear it can never detect coughing with speaking in the background because it has never seen that there, there is no mfcc representation which kind of captures that right uh oh. another way to look at it is if i have coughing if i have cough uh plus speech the mfcc of this thing is not equal to mfcc of 
cuff less NFCC of speech. Right? What does that mean? You can never, means I gave you something which you have never seen before. But in case of NMF, NMF uh, representation for cuff plus speech is equal to NMF representation of cuff plus NMF representation of speech. So you can say, I have seen these examples before. I have seen this and I have seen this. And this is just a linear combination of the two. That is why NMF features become very useful. They can take care of linear overlaps. I gave you an example, right, with audio. This is possible with, with images. It is not possible because the images, they occlude each other. Right? Objects are opaque. They cover each other. Okay. That is the utility of NMF features. Okay. Yes, it is linear decomposition of your input. It is linear decomposition. So if, I, I think I also gave examples of uh, overlapping audio and how we can separate them. We learn one dictionary from one source, another dictionary from another source. And when the two sources are mixed, we can just use the same dictionaries to separate them out. Because we know which dictionary belongs to which source. So whatever is reconstructed from this dictionary, I will use it to reconstruct my this source and this dictionary to this source. Okay. Okay. The goal of acoustic event detection is to label temporal regions within an audio recording. So, okay, what is acoustic event detection? So, basically, you have an audio, somebody coughed here, and people are talking here to, to mark the precise boundaries that this is cough and this is speech. This is the goal of acoustic event detection, the, the bigger goal. Uh, but I can simplify it. For example, I can say I just want to detect the events. I don't want to get the exact time boundaries. Possible. Or I can say I only want to detect the onset of the event. I'm not considered about the offset. Means whenever the cuff starts, tell me the cuff is starting. When it ends, I'm not interested in that. That is possible. Okay. So, but the overall goal means the uh, bigger problem is the symbolic detection description such that annotation gives the starting time the ending time and the label for a single instance of a specific event type. So note the word single instance. This, this problem is very difficult, I uh, mean, it's very ambiguous. What is the meaning of single instance now? Okay, if I cuff, <coughs> this is single instance. If I cuff, <coughs> it's a single instance or two instances? Okay, I can see, uh, uh, dis disagreements <laughs> amongst you. Okay, okay. If I say, is this door knock? Single instance or three instances? Somebody can say three instances because this is door knock. This is three door knocks. <laughs> okay. So these, there, there are ambiguities, and uh, believe me, I have worked with this problem in Amazon. It, it is a nightmare problem. <laughs> the, even just annotating is so difficult means we always, uh, almost every month we have to revise our conventions and then people have to, have to memorize these conventions and work according to that. It was a difficult problem. Okay, so, uh, okay, monophonic. What is the meaning of monophonic? Monophonic means only single event is present at a time. But poly polyphonic means many events can co-occur together, like speech versus cuff, or uh, I am singing, and somebody is playing uh, veena in the background, somebody is playing flute in the background, somebody is playing drums in the background, everything is overlapping. That is an ex example of polyphonic. Especially when you go to, uh, means if I go out of the class, you can hear a lot of polyphony. <laughs> Everybody will be speaking to each other and uh, so many different sources active together. That is polyphonic. Uh, okay. Uh, however, the salient, some specific salient events may occur sparsely. So there is, an, there is a value even in monophonic detection. For example, I want to detect gunshots. It is very unlikely, unless you go to a war, that so many gunshots are happening simultaneously. But in uh, normal living environments, gunshot will be a rare event. And it is very sparse, so 
so mono if you if i just am detecting monophonic gun sound it, it is a valid problem uh okay maybe you can go through these details i'll come to the highlighted portion so that we can quickly finish the issue of polyphony is pertinent to both the above tasks means in acoustic scene classification as well as in acoustic event detection uh, since the audio scenes are polyphonic or multi source in general uh, in speech recognition applications it can often be assumed that there is one dominant source that should be the focus of analysis and others can be just ignored as background noise actually that's what they do in speech recognition so they assume that even if people are talking in the background that consider everything as background noise only the most predominant source the speech only try to detect that or try to recognize even that part or oh, just that part ignore everything in the background so your alexa cannot detect or cannot recognize if two people are speaking simultaneously it cannot recognize both the people together like if uh, i start speaking and nitish also start speaking and we are together speaking different things then alexa can not okay most probably it won't be able to make out what i am speaking even if it is able to make out let us say i am little uh, louder because i am using microphone alexa will detect my voice or recognize my voice but it won't recognize the fish's voice at all it cannot give you two outputs so that is the speech recognition generally the focus but polyphony is not considered in speech recognition but in our case for event detection polyphony is an issue that is why we discussed the example of nmf features right okay so this is the importance of polyphony next about evaluation campaigns okay they are saying that we are uh, starting this international competition every year because it is very important to keep up with the state of the art and also allow people to uh, develop uh, on the same uh, benchmark data right okay and now let's see what's the challenge the challenge is first is a scene classification task that you are given different acoustic scenes uh it can also be of different kinds it could be multi labeled problem or multi class classification problem right multi level classification for example uh, let's say people are talking and i ask you uh, are there only male or are there only female or are there both male and female uh, or okay what is the uh, what is the what what are the languages which are present something like that or what is the age group approximately which you can detect from this multi label means okay i have many labels and they can be simultaneously true or if it is multi class classification okay just it is a classroom that is it i don't know anything beyond that the next problem is acoustic event detection uh so they have okay they have created two problems here okay one is how to detect individual non overlapping sounds and the other one is how to detect overlapping sounds okay okay this is a this is a major thing here actually i just randomly picked a paper this was this is the famous paper many citations and very popular in this in the area of acoustic event detection and acoustic scene classification but this is generally how you how you do good research right if you are interested in research i i would suggest go through this paper nicely you will get many many uh, ideas that how actually research is done so this is end to end research means this paper presents the problem end to end formulating the problem collecting the data annotating the data and then building a baseline and then people are submitting and evaluating evaluations and then evaluation analysis how do you analyze your results right so this and then uh, also if which method is the best and is it statistically significant that this is the best it is possible that the mean value is more but the overall distribution is similar so it is not actually the best one statistically not significant okay so all these analyses are there in this paper so whatever concepts we have learned in this course uh, many of them are covered in this paper so that's why i like this paper and that's why we are discussing it so i would recommend read this paper nicely and especially the portions which i am highlighting uh, and this will will be a part of your examination maybe we can give this paper and ask questions from this paper okay uh, so in they they collect they did this experiment in queen mary university in london it is 
there is a very good research group on audio there so uh, different size rooms okay now we discussed if you remember for data preparation we discussed the concept of generalization if i collect all my data from people sitting in this class and i try to run it on somebody outside the class or some different use case altogether then it won't there will be a heavy mismatch in our training and testing conditions right mm -hmm. so the, the results will be very bad so that is why it is important that we make our data very much variable that's why they used different sizes of the rooms different levels of noise different number of people in the room you can also add here different locations let's say some some company recorded called in london something in india something in us depending on the use case let us say you are maybe they are building only for london only for uk then they will record only from locations within uk okay then the same thing which we read that you split the data into three parts training development and test training is used for uh training your data development set or the validation set is used for give me one word hyperparameter tuning very good hyperparameter tuning and uh, the test is used for evaluation the final evaluation uh so they gave some details that okay all the data sets are the training set is only individual events development set and test set are overlapping events uh and they had made overlapping using scripts basically you take one cuff one speech uh, add them in your take both the audio and add them and this is your new uh sample test sample uh but this is scripted means you add randomness where you want to add uh, how much delay you want which events you want to pick you randomly you it's a scripted thing you write a script to mix the data okay and they have given other details like okay 24 recordings three recordings for test uh, for 24 recordings for training three for validation 11 for testing things like that so you make sure your data is large enough so that uh, whatever testing you do it is statistically significant if i just test on uh, let's say one one instance of cuff and my system says yes cuff is there and i will be very happy oh yes yes it is working it is working so it works if you are selling a product to a user <laughs> you're trying to impress a customer <laughs> but it does not work in uh, academic uh, evaluation setting where you are evaluating your method uh, properly you need many many instances we will discuss the concept of statistical significance uh, 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 in a while um, so okay data set creation okay so they have a hard time they have to get annotators who will be annotating the data okay first they go out and record these instances as you did you all all of you did you recorded the instances actually i wanted this to be a complete end to end exercise but unfortunately our students are not willing to do it uh, no problem <laughs> next semester we will try means next time when we offer this course uh, so this is um, there is uh, ambiguity in the annotation process and they have listed many many ambiguities uh, you will be overwhelmed by the <laughs> amount of uh, ambiguity it has but uh, you need to employ annotators in your case what who were the annotators okay you annotated your data and then you exchanged amongst yourself so some other annotator annotated the data Huh? Peer. peer peer group okay yes so and then you do the uh, what do you do then inter annotator agreement analysis right that is very important otherwise how do you know how good is the agreement how how good is the quality of your data we have discussed those things and now you see it's practically happening <laughs> next is data set creation okay Uh, oh sorry next is synthetic data set creation which means uh now you want to you have recorded individual sounds now you are mixing them to create polyphonic scenes for testing and uh, validation so the relevance of considering artificial scenes built from a set of isolated events different from those in the training corpus so they separated some individual instances for test and uh, validation and then they mixed them in different randomized ways and then they produced their test and evaluate validation sets though we admit that it is important to evaluate machine listening systems using real audio recordings but the potential gains from using artificial scenes 
as part of evaluation are numerous. Okay, important point. This is an important point. How you plan to create your data? Uh, yes, you can record real time data. Like if I want to do scene classification, I can just turn on my microphone and let things happen. And then later somebody will come, he will annotate. Oh, this was a cuff. This was the fan sound. This was this, in this area, somebody is speaking. There is a silence. There is sneezing. There is uh, music playing, something like that. So you, later people can do it, but it is really very hard. Like you can imagine the level of, uh, means the kind of, uh, effort which is required or the amount of effort which is required to do this is enormous so but if you collect pure sounds individual individual speech individual cuffing individual fan sound individual background noise like right? you, you all recorded background sounds like which which means you just leave the room nobody's here in the room and just record the background noise so what is the benefit of that first is ease of annotation how easy it becomes right because there are, if there are overlapping events, it, is, it becomes very difficult to, need, to know really is it there or not. I'll give you an example, very prominent example is, uh, so um, if let's say you are recording some sound in the kitchen and there is some sound, tap, 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 tap. So it could be uh, your tap is on and water is leaking or it could be uh, the fridge is making some sound or it could be uh, Somebody is cooking there and they are uh, like kind of making some sounds like maybe beating something or something. It is really very, very ambiguous. Okay, that is why, so uh, what they have done is they have collected individual <laughs> events and annotated the individual ones and then they mix and they can mix them to create so many mixtures, right? So many uh, randomized mixtures. So ease of annotation, ability to generate many scenes with similar properties in order to gain better statistical significance. Uh, if you have just limited little bit, a small number of test sets, the test examples, then you cannot statistically verify your results. But if there is a large number of data, then you can statistically verify, okay. Control of the complexity in terms of events overlap. Now I can, com I can control, let us say I want to uh, uh, either individual events or at most two events overlapping, right? But I can make the task more difficult. No, I want uh, five events overlapping. <laughs> it becomes even more difficult, right? I can control this. And the strength of the background, I can choose how much background noise I want. I can control that or I can randomize that. Uh, okay. Uh, so that's why background is important, uh, that you have a natural texture. It is not like uh, 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 an artificial sound. Okay, now we come to evaluation matrix. How do you evaluate your methods? Uh, in this uh, presentation, I'm just presenting evaluation of audio event detection, not for acoustic scene classification. So just uh, to do it faster. Okay, three types of evaluations are used. Okay, so just one criteria for evaluation is not sufficient. So you can have more criteria, which will give you better understanding of how systems are behaving. One is frame-based, other is event-based, and another one is class-wise event-based. Okay, what do they mean? Uh, first is the frame-based. In the frame-based evaluation was performed using 10 milliseconds of steps. Means you shift your window with a hop size of 10 milliseconds. What's the length of your window? They have not mentioned here. Maybe somewhere else they might have mentioned. Let's say 25 milliseconds or something. Right? And then the main metric used for frame-based evaluation is acoustic event error rate. So what is that? That means uh, basically deletions, insertions, and substitutions. There are many events happening at the same time. Okay, let me draw to give you a better idea. Let's say some audio file and now I annotate. Annotation says, this portion is speech. But it says, this portion is cuff. Then it says, oh here actually I can also hear some music going on. Okay. And then you 
divided this into frames. You said, okay, let me make frames. Okay, then you made many, many frames like this. Right? Frame-based evaluation means you take one frame, let's say I took the first frame here, and then you have the ground truth and you have the estimation. Let us say this is the ground truth. Estimation will be, let us say in the first frame, my estimation also is just speech is present. Now tell me what is your AEER? How many deletions are there? Zero, because your ground truth says speech and speech is also there in the detected thing. Uh, let me draw it. Let us say this is your ground truth. This is your estimation. And this is your time frame T. Okay. Like that. Right? It's one. Okay. Ground truth is only speech. Your estimation is only speech. No substitution, no deletion, nothing. Right? So you have, what is your AWER? 100%? You're not awake. You're sleeping. Huh? Zero. There is no deletion, no insertion. No substitution, so error is zero. So let me write here error A double E R. A double E R will be zero here. Okay, let us say in the second case, uh, I have speech as well as cuff. Will you consider music to be present or absent? It's partially present. Huh? Present or absent? Sufficient disagreement, thank you. So yes, this is a this is a um, what is it called ambiguous case. So you have to make a convention. Do you want to take it or not? So generally we make conventions. Okay, if the total uh, like distance total length is 10 milliseconds, I say okay. If it is less than two milliseconds, then I ignore it. If it is more than two milliseconds, I keep it. Right. So I make a convention. Okay. Let us assume this is less than two milliseconds. Right. So I have only S and C. And I estimate speech. That's it. So what is my A W -E R now? I didn't recognize the cuff. Uh, what is capital N here? Huh? Read it properly. You learn reading also. Number of frames, it, it doesn't say n is the number of frames. Number of frames. What is the number of events here? One, two, three, four. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so let us read it more carefully. n is the number of events to detect for that specific frame. Number of events to detect, what does that mean? The ground truth. Okay, I think it's, it is ambiguous. Number of events to detect for that specific frame. I would, I would interpret it as number of events means the number of events in the ground truth. Yeah, you are right, it could be three. Okay, let us take it as three. Okay, n is equal to three. What is, uh, yeah, let us uh, fix this convention and number of events is total number of events. Okay, then it is three. Okay, then what is the number of deletions here? How is it three? Total number of events which are possible. Means uh, total number, of, you, you have trained your network to, train your classifier or detector to detect certain number of events, right? Mm -hmm. You can say, I will only detect speech, cough, music and sneezing. That's it. I'm not going to detect gunshots. That will have enough for Okay, I, I consider only speech, music and cuff. 
Okay, let us say sneezing also. Then sneezing also is a possibility. Then n, n will be 4, right? Happy? Okay, let's take a more general case. So what is the number of deletions here? Deletions is 1. Substitutions? Sorry, a first insertions. Insertions? 0. Substitutions? Substitutions? Why 0? Yeah, it says minimum of d comma i. Although I don't agree with this definition, because in this case, if I think if you're considering both deletions and insertions, because one deletion plus one insertion will bring one substitution, it can be replaced with one substitution, right? If I delete one thing and add one thing, this is equivalent to substituting one thing. Right? Then why are they considering minimum of d comma i? Right? Yeah, then they don't, they, they should not count it twice. And they will make those insertions, they will reduce the number, the i from there. Are you getting my point? Uh, let us say there is, okay, let us consider this case for, for, time, for the time being. I have m here. Now what is d? d is equal to 1, i is equal to 1, s is equal to 1. So I think this is a problem. So it should be d equal to 0, i equal to 0, s is equal to 1. Right? So I don't agree with this formula. So see, there can be so much of uh, scope for uh, engineering even in the evaluation matrix. Uh, so what I would recommend to modify it like d minus s plus i minus s plus s. Will that be? Yeah, maybe this is the formula. Means, looks like. d minus s plus i minus s plus s. So in this case, then it will be, uh, it will be a e e r will be equal to uh, 0 plus 0 plus 1 divided by 4, which is correct, 1 by 4, right? This is my understanding, okay, you can correct it if you don't like. Uh, okay, next, um, so yeah, similarly we can compute for music, uh, this is the third frame also. So this is how we compute AER. Next we are going to compute precision, recall and F measure. What is precision? They say it's C upon E. C is the number of correct uh, instances. E is the number of estimated instances. How many correct are there in this case? One is correct. How many estimated? One is estimated. Precision will be? Don't consider the orange case, just the green case. In the green case, precision is? Huh? Precision is 1, very good. Recall is, now recall is defined as C upon R, number of correct divided by number of things in the ground truth. How much is the recall? 1 by 2. How much is the F measure? That is, okay, just twice of PR upon P plus R. You can compute that. Right? Okay, for the event based, now the next metric is event based metric. Somebody may not like this metric. Why somebody may not like? Because there, are, there is a convention involved, okay, the music uh, should be less than point, less than 2 milliseconds. Uh, if, if music is less than 2 milliseconds, I don't consider it as a label in that frame, right? And uh, so that can be a problem. So what people also could do is event based metrics. So each event is considered to be correctly detected if the onset is within 100 milliseconds tolerance. So let us say if, if I have cuff here, so if this is the ground truth and I estimate, so my estimate is something like this.
and if this distance d if d is less than 100 milliseconds i say uh, it's correct yeah uh, okay. for the onset so this is so i'm not considering the offset but if you want to consider offset also then the offset should be within 50% range that is their convention that is their metric and then you can use aeer and prf for this uh, kind of situation like right? in the entire audio how many things did you correct how many things did you correctly estimated how many things did you miss and deleted how many things did you substituted how many things did you inserted like all those stuff it will be done at the audio file level not at the frame level to be at the audio file level next is class wise event based matrix it is the same thing you are computing the same matrix but now you are aggregating them class wise how many cuff means what is the uh, error for the cuff only for cuff class or only for the speech class right so class wise evaluation now the baseline system this is interesting so they, they when they organize a challenge they give a baseline system a very basic system they say okay this is what our system is behaving like can you do better than this then people participate and they do better than that they try to do better than that so their base their baseline system is a <coughs> is an nmf based system so they use supervised method for event detection basically they learn their dictionaries and then extract those h uh, activations these are your features then use your a bag of frames approach a bag of features approach to model the gmms and then whatever new data is coming in you uh, compare it with the means try to estimate which class it is the training data is normalized to unity variance uh this is important our data should be normalized for algorithms to work better you have you have discussed this we have discussed this in uh, while discussing neural networks and feature preparation same thing is used here okay then here are the exact equations what they used see now again hyperparameter tuning is not of my can you shut this door please so uh you need hyperparameter tuning uh, why because you do not know how many dictionary elements how many dictionary vectors to use right that's hyperparameter so that's why they took value of 5 8 10 12 15 20 20 and so on to find the best hyperparameter to uh, do the classification you can go through this it's the same nmf stuff what what you have done so this is their baseline system that they do the they extract the features using nmf then each feature they model with the help of gmm or something i don't remember what exactly did they use okay uh so okay for their challenge they created the data sets and they ran the code submissions people submitted their algorithms and they ran the code submissions and then evaluated and then they declared results who did the best or something like that so lot of tasks are involved supervision of annotators these are the most significant ones which took away a lot of time of the organizers first is annotation right i told you that annotation is not taught in machine learning courses but this is a major headache for uh, those who do actual machine learning so this is this was an actual headache for them also supervision of annotate annotators to ensure good data quality and listening sessions and manual inspection to ensure data quality okay so you have uh, good uh, empirical evidence now <laughs> okay then uh, just a minute i think i should go to the paper because this was the paper okay we discussed the baseline this system we discussed challenge organization then the results submitted systems okay these are the different submissions from different groups research groups all all around the world these are the results the results it's very important that we report our results very nicely right you can do first class research you can get very good results but if you don't present or if you if you don't I means your model can be very good but if you don't rigorously evaluate it it is not going to be uh, appreciated by the reviewers so in this one they are reporting the overall performance of the submitted systems uh, along with significance tests uh, so i can show you the overall results first 
so the accuracy for different methods the baseline is achieving this much accuracy what are these bars pardon the variance it captures the variance of what uh, so you have data let us say i have got 1000 test files uh, they have done five fold cross validation so you divide it in five chunks and do evaluation on each chunk separately and you obtain an accuracy measure so in this way you will obtain five values of accuracy right so you assume it to be a gaussian and you just plot the mean and the variance right so this was your mean oh, sorry not variance but standard deviation because you want to keep it on the same scale so this was the mean and this was the standard deviation uh, let us say plus sigma up and plus minus sigma here plus plus minus sigma so this gives you not just an idea of how well two systems are doing like let's say uh, if i compare the baseline system with uh, let's say kh which one is better next class